Hello and welcome to this video. This is Amazing Racing Stories, Episode 7. The Ferraris that were... Mm, different. The Ferrari with no Prancing Horse logo. After being misled by a source, I told you a story in the Spa History video that is not 100% correct and I want to rectify it here. Ferrari and Nuvolari Enzo Ferrari originally faced Nuvolari in the racetrack. Here's the full story. After a break that lasted from 1924 to 27, Ferrari returned to racing. He obtained less relevant results in races that led him to face champions of the caliber of Nuvolari and Varzi. And sometimes he even managed to beat them. His most beautiful race was precisely one of the last, the circuit of the three provinces of 1931, in which he qualified second after an exciting duel with the emerging champion Nuvolari. The future Nivola, the flying Mantovano, at the end of the race said, To beat you, you forced me to work like I had never done before. It was probably the best compliment that Ferrari had received in the course of his career as a driver. In 1932, Nuvolari won almost everything with the Alfa Romeo P2, but in 1933, the Mark retired from racing, which was disastrous for Nuvolari's career. Alfa Romeo racing cars were then run by Enzo Ferrari in a semi-works deal. In 1933, Nuvolari won 11 races. On the racing side, this was certainly a positive season, but otherwise it was characterized by disagreements and tension. Tazio won the Tunisian Grand Prix, the Mille Miglia, the Circuit of Alessandria, the Eiforenen, the Grand Prix of Nîmes, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The Divorce the myth of the flying Mantuan was born and Ferrari took advantage of it, increasing its prestige and its influence in the world of motorsports. But very soon he would receive an unpleasant surprise, colored in French blue and with a name reminiscent of Italy, Bugatti. The Alpha 8 Cs were not up to the standard Ettore creatures that Nuvolari, despite winning the Eiffel and the Nîmes Grand Prix, began to claim the right to which car to race with. A legitimate right, since the Ferrari team was not the racing team of an automobile firm. These agreements arose between Tazio and Ferrari, and on July 2nd, Nuvolari signed an agreement with Ernesto Maserati to run their cars, but always with the colors of the Modena team. At the start of the Belgium Grand Prix, he appeared with a Maserati 8CM prepared by his personal mechanic Decimo Compagnoni. He tried the Ferrari's Alfa Romeo and preferred the Maserati which he changed and adapted overnight in a local garage. His entry was done by Ferrari, but he was racing a car from another competitor, so... He won in Belgium in a car entered by Ferrari, but without the Prancing Horse logo on it, as he officially raced exclusively Alfa Romeo cars. So Nuvolari decided to divorce from the Scuderia Ferrari. Tazi was led to this move by being convinced that, by going it alone, he could get better cars and make more money too. Later, he won in the Coppa Ciano and in the Grand Prix of Nice, ending the season on the Spanish track in San Sebastián, where he had a serious accident. In 1933, he drove five different cars, Alfa Romeo 8C 2300 Spider, Paso Corto, Alfa Romeo 8C 2300 Le Mans, 8C 2600 Monza, Maserati 8CM. He also had an MG Magnet K3 for the tourist trophy where Nuvolari was, of course, first overall. The victories of the Mantuano came, but the relationship with Ferrari was no longer good. The divorce between the two did not surprise anyone. What is more, the consequences that it would cause would end up favoring Enzo Ferrari. 
Nuvolari and Borzakini left, but Alpha, perhaps fearing that he had lost the best driver of the moment, had agreed to deliver the much-desired P3s to the Ferrari team. In addition, Luigi Fagioli arrived in Modena, where Giuseppe Campari also returned, although the latter would meet his death at the Monza circuit that same year, in an accident that also involved the unlucky Borzakini and the Polish Count Kczykowski. Fagioli, in any case, won repeatedly. The season closed with a positive balance. Peace with Ferrari. At the end of 1934, Nuvolari entered into negotiations with Auto Union. It is known that in September, Tazio had a double test drive with the 16C Type A rear engine, the first test at the Grand Prix in Spain on the Lazarte circuit in San Sebastián, the second in Brno at the Masaryk circuit. However, some pilots of the Auto Union opposed to the signing up of Tazio. The engagement was broken and the wedding put off. The Auto Union hired Akile Varzi instead. So the Flying Mantuan signed the peace treaty, let's call it that way, with Enzo Ferrari. And in 1935, Tazi was back in Scuderia Ferrari. He soon began to win again, in the first race of the season, at Pau on an Alfa Romeo P3, and again in Bergamo, Biela and Turin, with a more powerful and modified model P3 of the Scuderia Ferrari. F1 Ferrari cars that were not red. Right, now we go some years later, when the official Ferrari F1 cars were not painted red, and those blue and white cars eventually brought John Surtees to the Drivers' Championship and the team to the Constructors' Championship in 1964. I briefly mentioned this story in my Monza Circuit history video. Note that, in a distant past, there were Ferrari cars that were sold abroad and were run by other nations than Italy, and they were painted in those national colors. Sterling Moss had a deal with Ferrari to run the 1962 season on a private Ferrari painted in British racing green. But he suffered a career-ending crash before the first race, so this never happened. This is not what I am talking about here. I am referring to the official team. The Ferrari team bought four cars to the US Grand Prix 1964 for John Surtees and Lorenzo Bandini. But they were not in the usual flaming red that the race program advertised. Enzo Ferrari had surrendered his entrance license in a dispute at Monza, so the cars were entered by Ferrari American importer Luigi Cinetti's North American Racing Team and were painted in North American Racing Blue and White. The reason for this surprising situation can be found in the statement made by Enzo Ferrari at Monza, where he said that he would never race on Italian soil again and handed his competition's license. Here's the full story. The Ferrari 158. The 1964 season saw Ferrari bringing V8 engines back and introducing a monocoque chassis for the first time. The Ferraris 158, driven by Lorenzo Bandini and John Surtees, collected a total of 7 podiums, 2 pole positions and 2 wins in a total of 10 races. The original chassis design, which was used until the US Grand Prix at Watkins Glen, was painted in the traditional Rosso Corsa and was equipped with beautiful turquoise rims. At the time, F1 teams raced in national colors. Italian colors are sky blue for traditional sports and bright red for motorsports. Right before the last two rounds of the season, however, FIA and the Italian Automobile Club, ACI, made a decision which would cause Enzo to completely lose the red for the rest of the championship. Enzo's anger The story begins in 1962. Enzo wanted to homologate his 250 GTO to compete in GT racing. 
However, the Italian Automobile Club and the FIA regulations at the time required a minimum of 100 road models of a car to be produced before obtaining homologation for racing. Ferrari wasn't able to produce so many models, but managed to trick the FIA and the ACI into believing that requirements were met. Fast forward 1964, and Ferrari wanted to homologate a new race car, the 250LM. However, this time the FIA wasn't easily fooled, and the Scuderia saw their request denied. ACI failed to back in the Ferrari in his discussion with FIA, having been fooled themselves. And Enzo was so angered that he decided to sever all ties between Ferrari and Italy. He gave up on his competitor's license, and both the American and the Mexican rounds of the championship were raced in particular conditions. On the grid, Ferrari was represented by the satellite constructor NART. It might sound absurd to today's audiences, but it was perfectly regular back in the day, and raced in a white and blue outfit. John Surtees finished second in both races, and after both championship wins, Enzo's threat to never race in Italian colors again was very short-lived. To reach his goals, Enzo Ferrari has always been very political and he liked a tense ambience surrounding him. In politics, between drivers, in the factory and in the race pit. He was not perfect, but he knew how to reach his goals. You gotta give him that. Credit where it is due. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends, leave a line in the comments section if you have something to say or ask, and subscribe for more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Take care.